Hello and welcome to another Creative Motion tutorial. Um, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the second part or the second video to this series um, and we're going to be looking at the, um, the bounding box node. So one of the ways that the bounding box nodes works, it, it works slightly different in Expresso as it does to, um, to Python. So in Expresso essentially all it will be doing is it will be Define, or defining an edge to your mesh so it works like in a similar way to the dynamics you know if this if, it, if dynamics created a, a box uh, around your object um, it's just defining these dimensions so from it you'll get um, you know your height your width um, and also the depth as well um, to this so you you've got all all three dimensions <clears throat> from it the the method we'll be using in python is um is kind of working from the center point so it cal it'll be calculating a radius so it'll be calculating the distance from the center point to the edge of the bounder box in all three um directions okay so now you've got a, a, just a general idea of um the measurements we'll be um taking from from the mesh we'll jump straight into this Okay, so um, and then pull in bounding box, and you can see automatically here we've got you know all these um, features already put put in. So you all these attributes. So you've got box minimum, box minimum, maximum, um, box size, and object. And ob object is obviously referencing the objects in your scene. So um, let's just pull in the sphere. Um, and we'll convert this to a polygonal object as well because when with a lot of the primitive objects you've you've already got the um the radius and sizes and everything kind of already there so you don't need to calculate the um you know the the kind of dimensions of your shape because most of the calculation can be taken straight from like these um parameters here but if we do convert this down you can see how we lose that um and then all you have is your coordinates and um, you got Obviously, your free vectors, but the scale vectors not obviously not giving you any any of that information. Um, so let's just pull this in, um, and on the sphere we'll just pull out object and the link <clears throat> object to object, and also let's just um, okay. So what we'll be doing here, so. Yeah, for, so for, for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to align the base of the object with uh, with the plane. So what I want to do is when I resize this object, I'd like to keep the base um, point um, on the ground plane. <clears throat> so at the moment, obviously, if I scale this object up and down, um, the base point is going to move up and down. Um, but I want to kind of calculate the Y value based on the size of this. Uh, and we can do that with the bounding box. Okay, so first up, so we've got <clears throat> the objects in the scene, we've got the bounding box, which is obviously measuring this, and we'll just pull in the result node just so we can see what's actually happening here. Uh, and that gives us the box size. So let's just change result to a vector and here you go you can see we've got <clears throat> all three dimensions so this should be um, sorry let's just select the correct object yeah so you can see the objects 200 by 200 dot by 200 and it's reading out the results here <clears throat> we can separate these these results because obviously at the moment we're feeding in three separate values um, and we only want to kind of calculate this based on the y value uh, so to do this we will need to use one of the other nodes and that will be if you go into new node expresso um, adapter and essentially what we want to do is convert the vector to real so vector to reals and here you go now you can see how this is split in the x y and z values so if we pull box size into input, 
we can now separate these values out. So if we just break the connection on the result node there, um, and then we just pull Y back into this. Again, it's giving us three separate values, but it's reading it as a vector. So we just change this to real again. We should be just be getting one vector out of this. Okay, so you, you kind of get, a, get an idea of um, how this is working. Okay, so, so now we've got the height of this, what we want to do is move the, the Y position of the box based on the radius of this. So <clears throat> what we can do here is if we bring in a, a new node, Expresso General Math, so Calculate Math node, um, and we just want to divide this distance, okay, so what we want to do is the bounding box is obviously giving us this distance here and we just want to um, like divide that by two so we get half the distance and then what we want to do is just move this object up half the distance and it always lie on that baseline so no matter how we scale this this will calculate and update accordingly um, so it always just kind of stays at the base um, on the plane level So if we just pull Y into here, we'll just break this for a second, um, and we'll just divide this, and we'll divide this by two. Okay, so yeah, so we've just half the value here, uh, and now we can just feed this value directly into the Y position of this sphere. So we'll pull the sphere in, and um, we'll just make, yeah, we'll obviously just make a different copy of it just so it doesn't confuse things on screen. Um, pull this in, go to coordinates. Uh, okay. Yeah, coordinates, global position, and global position on the Y. And you can see how that's just moved that up there. And now what we should be able to do is if we select this and just scale the object, you can see. Um, let me just move around. You can see that it's always scaling from the base point. So it's almost like having the axis at this point um, on the base, but essentially what it's doing is as it's scaling, it's moving the object um, in the Y position just to kind of align everything and align both those points at that plane. Okay, so <clears throat> now we've done that, we'll do these, do a similar kind of thing in, in Python um, using similar calculations. So we'll just close this out, delete this tag for now, just so it's not doing anything. Um, I'll just clear this out. Um, and I'll show you what I did here is, is say if we just break, undock this, um, all I did is I opened up the console, so if you go to scripts, console, it'll bring up this console onto the screen. Um, <clears throat> you can bring up this window just by, so if I close this down, just double clicking on the tab, uh, on the tag, and it brings this up. Now, to kind of troubleshoot your setup, uh, I like to use this console a lot, so I tend to just dock it onto the side, uh, and then when I'm trying to like execute the code, it'll it'll show me the results. So if it's not working, you know, you kind of see what's happening and try to problem solve it based on what it's kicking out. So let's just um, declare the first variable, which is the object. So because the tags on this object, we'll put in. Um, let's just call this obj. And we'll do op, so it's an operation on the object, not the tags on. And we'll pop in um, get object. Um, and you need to make sure that you capitalize um, these functions here as well. Um, and also, thing to remember as well, just make sure the indentation, indentation is correct as well, because even just one space. Um, back this one execute so you need to be just be really careful about you know how many spaces in this is I think but I think by it should be four spaces so yeah it's four spaces in ok 
Okay, so now now we've got the objects, what we want to do is declare another variable. So essentially what, what we need to do is we need to get the um, size of this. Uh, and we can do this by going, um, okay, let's do, yeah, let's just create a variable called size equals, um, and we'll just go obj, which is the object that's been declared. Um, and then we'll do dot get rad. And that will get us a bounding box radius. So as we discussed before, it's essentially, it's not calculating, because this is one of, this is one of the things that confused me at first. It's not calculating the the length of the bounding box. It's just cal it's calculating the center point to the edge of the bounding box. So size will now have that value. So that should be, um, well, I don't know. It's going to be like 125, around about that. Okay, so now we have that value, but we can use that to drive the height of the object. So if we go in here and we, let's just say, um, OBJ and then click on this object um, and pull in the yeah, the Y position in there and then we can just make that equal to this radius value. So that will be size um, and actually just, just so you understand how this works, I'll just create a, a hashtag I can figure out how to do it on the keyboard. Uh, where the hell is it going? Okay. Yeah, done it. Okay, so now that's out of the way. What we'll do is we'll just print to the consoles just so you get an idea of the data that's being kicked out. So we'll print um, size. Oh, I've put an uppercase P. Change that print size, um, and then we'll execute. And you can see it's kicking out the vector information. So. It's given us a vector for each one of the dimensions. So it's given us um, X, Y, and Z of the boundary box or, or the radius of the boundary box, let's just say. Um, and you can see, like like I said before, so it would be about one to five, um, which is half of the, the Y distance. So, so that's correct. Uh, but all we need is the Y value. So with with this command, if we if to put like, obviously the object um, and then dot get rad, so that's getting this information and it's going to contain a vector uh, of information. Now it's a list of three separate values and we can access um, these values by um, using the numbers like zero, one and two um, to go through the list. So if we go back to this now, um, let's just delete the print size and go size um, delete this size and we just put in let's just put in um, X so X Y so it needs to be one let me execute that and let's just see if this is working yeah so you can see how it's doing the same thing as the Expresso tag did when we resize this You can see it's updating in the scene, um, and it's just constraining the the height, the size of the object. Okay. Um, what might help us to kind of visualize things here is if we go, if we just print this out, and you can see this updating in real time. So we'll just print. Let's just print um, this value. So size one. 
execute this and then you can see see this the value changing so you can see the the y dimensions moving so this object is actually moving up and down as we resize so you can see everything updating in the console window there just delete this and um, I mean, one of the things about doing this on the tag is if we just bring in a new object into the scene so I'll just pop in a cone so we've got this cone, we'll just convert the cone um, and just pull it anywhere we'll just like throw it up here um, throw it off and then what should happen is if we just increase the size of the plane and I pull this tag and drop it onto the cone you can see the cone's aligned now and if we resize the cone it keeps the base of the cone always at that point. Okay, so I uh, hope you found this useful. Um, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.